My name is Paul Wong. I'm an artist, and you're in my studio in uh, Chinatown in Vancouver. At the moment, um, I am working on a, a project called Occupying Chinatown. So it's been a project that's been in development for a couple of years and then kind of in production for the last year. I just la launched its website uh, called OccupyingChinatown.com, which documents uh, 21 projects I did last year um, as part of a public art residency uh, here in Chinatown, where this space was the um, production um, and, and, and workspace, and then Chinatown outside these windows, and then down the street is a place called the Dr. Sun Yat Sen Classical Chinese Garden, uh, which is a, um, a 400 year old designed and uh, built on the technology of a main garden. Uh, but it was only put in there 35 years ago. So um, uh, I did a year-long residency there, kind of bring, making that place come alive with um, uh, contemporary ideas and contemporary art. So it was an infusion of um, 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 multimedia works, video works, uh, you know, photo text works, language works, neon works, uh, talks and, workshop, and workshops um, um, to, to use that space um, as a living um, studio, not just as a uh, ancient classical um, tourist garden. And that was a very successful engagement because in Vancouver, um, the, the public art program um, made available uh, a, a public art commissions where the artist got to initiate the idea from start. It wasn't usually public art projects they're asking an artist to, you know, some, some architectural site or some park or some plaza to do a mural or to respond to a site. In, in this particular um, um, project, um, the artist got to com come up with completely the site, um, the scope of the project, and um, uh, my project um, wasn't about building a monument or having something um, permanent. It was a series of talks, exhibitions, engagements um, that, that uh, was over a year and then kind of gone. So, I mean, the Occupying Chinatown um, project, uh, much of it was inspired from um, 900 letters written to my mother over 65 years. And these letters were discovered you know, after her death, uh, you know, in her private quarters, in her, in her bedroom, in her trunks, in her, in her drawers. So those, uh, gathering together all those letters written to her, um, mostly from family, relatives, and close friends from Southern China, you know, it, you know her ancestral um, um, home, her, her ancestral villages. Um, and those letters um, you know, she came from bourgeois family and she's the only one to migrate and settle here. So there's a lot of burden in those letters. There's a lot of desperate people reporting and pleading for help. You know, please let my son be come over. Uh, you know, uh, please help us with food and money and clothing. And um, um, you know, she became the hopes and dreams for all her siblings and family members because she was here in Canada, and they were uh, stuck there in the brutality of of the, com of the Chinese Communist Revolution. And because they all came from bourgeois families, um, their, 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 their lives were very difficult. In fact, every, everything in this studio, because I, st this, I got this studio at the same time uh, as I started that residency like 14 months ago. So everything in this studio is related to, to everything I've done in the last year. So these spaces started out empty. So all these right here, actually, 
just got finished. So these are the 900 um, letters that have all been cataloged, scanned, and printed. So now I have um, work copies. So I have the originals, I have the digital copies, and then I have uh, the printed copies. So that just kind of got finished um, last week. So there, there in these binders are the 900, 2500 pages of letters from 90 writers. Uh, and what's um, um, in the other room are several um, works, Mother's Cupboard, which is um, a, s a series of photographs of jars uh, from my mother's cupboard, Western brand jars filled um, by her special and prized um, Chinese traditional medicines, herbs, and ingredients that she would use in, in her cooking. So mother's cupboard uh, became a this series of uh, ex examinations and deconstruction of, of, of this collection and it's become a series of uh, um, public art, uh, big backlit prints in bus shelters across the city and it's a series of um, smaller prints in kind of gallery exhibition and there's also a, a video with it uh, which was a documentation of her talking about those herbs and showing off, uh, telling me about her, her collection uh, a number of years ago. So that, so that series is called Mother's Cupboard. Uh, also in there are several um, uh, scrolls um, um, where I, I have assembled um, a number, a, a selection of um, eight letters from uh, four writers and have made a series of, of scrolls, three formal scrolls on the wall and one very little 13 page um, table scroll that you read like a book, which is a 13 page letter. And then there's also a neon sign um, um, that says uh, Chinese only, in Chinese only. And that's, that's the title of the work, although literally the sign is more like Chinese limited or Chinese exclusion which um, due to the uh, discriminatory and race, racist um, immigration policies th of this country, the Chinese were allowed to come as, as indentured workers to work in the mines and build the rail railways. But when that was all done, um, they weren't welcome to stay in this country and certainly not welcome to come, more, more of us to come. So there was a thing called the Chinese Exclusion Act, which was in place for many decades. So that Chinese only or Chinese exclusion relates to that thing called the Chinese Exclusion Act, which was something implemented around 1920, 13, 1923. And I think was not finally revoked in 1947. So that was to try to keep the Chinese out by applying certain kinds of restrictions and taxations, um, landing fees that were to, um, um, where they couldn't uh, bring family or, or brides or become uh, um, uh, citizens. So the Chinese in this country um, were, not, were not given citizenship until 1947. And what did you learn through your mother's letters and the work that you've done around the jars? Well, first of all, I can't read, unfortunately, um, um, I can't read or write a Chinese. I can understand and speak a very specific dialect that my mother spoke, which is a very regional, regional, regional dialect of Cantonese, which has now become which used to be the dominant languages, the dominant language in Chinatown, but um, uh, uh, with Mandarin having become the official language, um, the major language uh, in, in, in dominant China, 
um, a, a Cantonese, and in my case, twice on these, is now kind of disappearing. Everyone speaks Mandarin and maybe a second or third a dialect. Um, so not being able to, 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 to read or, or, or write, you know, I've had to depend on translators to start translating some of these letters for me. So that's, that's, so that's, so that's, so this idea of, um, my, my own personal loss because I do not understand how to read or write, but at the same time, the dialect that my, that my mother spoke is rapidly disappearing. And I'm sitting in a Chinatown that is also rapidly disappearing, which used, which once used to be a, the bustling core and center of Chinese business, live and work ghetto that was, um, you know, almost 100% occupied by Chinese for many, many, many square blocks um, uh, has not been repopulated. And each day, and each week, and each month, more and more and more of the businesses that, that sustain the Chinese community are disappearing. So this project um, is uh, um, a lot about is disappearing, and what um, and what um, is re is retained. I think this project kind of started originally with some recordings, which I never ended up using, um, 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 because my mother was undergoing Alzheimer's for the last four or five or six years of her life. And um, um, I moved in with her, and so I was often recording, uh, 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 trying to capture her essence and to capture uh, um, her, her, her story or moments like Mother's Cupboard, where, where she's taking out everything and, and um, telling me about what's in all the jars and the packages. Um, what's kind of shifted is that originally in recording that, it was about what is being lost through one's loss of, of, of memory. But what's actually happened in, in the development of a number of these works is what's being remembered. And a lot of that is now through these letters because she, she has no voice in these letters. We don't hear from her. These are all letters written to her. Um, so there's this wonderful absence. We have these jars and this language um, that's, that, that, that's not spoken by her, but this is kind of um, um, the remnants of objects and words. So, they, so it becomes, um, and I also approached a lot of this material like I found it in a trunk, in a basement, and I don't know the person at all. So there's a kind of, uh, of course I have the, the beauty of actually knowing the background story. So there's an there's approach to this that, that is not, uh, it's not a family tree, it's not an ethnographic study, it's not a documentary, um, it's just kind of, um, responding intuitively by piecing a, a number of things together and, and see what emerges, which is uh, a number of works. Like I said, um, it's not about me and my mother. Uh, in fact, the work, because put out there, when people saw these big jars 
made like an ad on a back lit on the bus stops um, everybody responded to them because they recognize these jars and this I these retro jars that they all grew up with and recognized it as this kind of advertising style but then realized it wasn't quite and they almost everyone was responded saying my grandmother my mother kept herbs and pickles and dry goods and reused jars all the time so the so the so it 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 it, it um um speaks to um something that wasn't about mother or son it, it just the, the just that uh, making these insignificant you know jars to have in here um, from someone's cupboard and focusing it on, on it and, and, and making it big and bold kind of took them out of the dark and kind of placed them into the light and then people ah. so um, uh, and also the um, these letters of ordinary but extraordinary histories of um, uh, the writers um, and the China Revolution and the Chinese diaspora and the Chinese Canadian cultural history and, 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 and issues um, um, you know, they're not about the individual that they're written to. Um, they actually sp speak very much of the everyday history of the Chinese diaspora shared by those in China and those abroad. Because it's kind of a, again, um, The fact that uh, I have these and I'm doing something with these, where in many cases um, they would have been thrown away, or nothing done with them, or put in some archive as 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 as, as some kind of historical narrative, but taking it up and and, and um, uh, with my artistic license and doing something else with them that's not about um, yeah I'm, I'm it's 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 <clears throat> neither fiction nor non-fiction what I'm doing with them I'm taking a non-fiction source and putting it out there in bits that's fragments of story that's fragments of memory, that's fragments of history, that's fragments of uh, calligraphic style, um, 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 language. And what are the future of those letters? Are you going to continue unfolding and unraveling <coughs> the stories? Well, I've only, you know, managed to work with, um, you know, so far, um, I have produced work from eight letters from four writers. There is 90 writers and 2,500 pages of you know, 900 letters. Um, uh, you know, right now um, uh, I'm in discussion with the museum. They're interested in Mother's Cupboard, they're interested in the Chinese Only Neon, and they're interested in a number of these letters that I mentioned where there's discussion about food and medicinal er her herbs. And a lot of my work has, has, has been, um, uh, you know, site specific. You know, I, I make work responding to a site or a context or complete a work for a, a specific exhibition. Um, it, you, know, you always have a, a number of things you're working on or because I've been working for 40 years, you know, I have a huge palette of, of things I can pull from. So, th so th th this um, is, is now, as I've started to understand more and more of it, is 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 is, is it, it, 
it can be never ending, um, which is kind of kind of, kind, of, kind of wonderful. Um, you, know, you know, you know, having this project and having this studio, and I being back in Chinatown. You know, the studio has become a bit of a destination. So it's, it's been, um, I've been able to engage with elders and uh, Chinese speakers and translators uh, and curators, uh, programmers. Uh, you know, I just got, um, um, I, and I was talking to somebody and they told, uh, I was actually talking to um, uh, this young woman has an exhibition downstairs opening today and she wanted to meet me and she came up and talked to me yesterday and we were talking about this project and she said oh she has a friend who wrote something about seeing the exhibition and I got that today and it's a very long poem in response to this 13 page scroll so um, I mean, it's interesting when you put work out there, uh, and 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 when you, um, um, you know, people have come into this, the studio, or to the exhibitions and the workshops, and have taught me lots, because they see these connections which I may not have seen, or they can read the label and tell me that. I've translated it wrong or right, that this is used with this and that this is connected with that. Um, and I had um, um, uh, an elder walk in here last week and started looking at some of the photographs that got blown up in the other room. And she just looked at that one photograph and just kind of was able to tell me she instantly saw that there was there was this family picture from 1926 and she says they've got overseas connections they are a bourgeois family a very bourgeois family because look at what to have a photograph like this and to wear that kind of traditional Chinese clothes or that kind of Western clothes you know it was just yeah, she, she understood it, because she's of that generation. She was in her 90s, so she would have grown up around um, and knowing all of that. That neon sign. Ham Sui Fao Wa Gua Wa is spoken in my mother's dialect, which is twice Sanese. So it translates into salt water city. Ham Sui Fao. Anyone, anywhere in any Chinatown that spoke Cantonese or Twai Sanese, when I said Ham Sui Fao, they would know that I meant here, Vancouver. That was the Chinese name for this city, salt water city. The last three characters, Wan Goa Wa, means mild, warm. Goa is older brother. Wa is Chinese. That is phonetically made it possible for a Chinese speaker to go Wan Ku Wa, Vancouver. So, um, um, that, that's in Cantonese, which is the, the, the disappearing dialect in this dying Chinatown. So that, that is an homage to the pioneers of this Chinatown. And now that, um, um, that sign is being placed permanently uh, in, a, in a very special place in Chinatown. So that was another one of the works that came out of the, out of the residency. Uh, and then there was a lot of discussion um, when we exhibited the sign, where people thought it would go. So I had it photoshopped onto a, a bunch of different sites and buildings and street corners, and there was some you know, discussion about what 
where people thought they would like it or didn't like it. And um, uh, uh, then I selected the final site, which actually happens to be the backside and the alleyway um, of what used to be the original city hall that was just located next to Chinatown. So that's where it's going to be permanently placed as a public art work. I just laid these out yesterday. These are slightly larger than the originals and it just happens that these letters here is also um, um, the same letter as this scroll that I'm going to show you. So I, as part of one of the works I produced um, um, is this this, this, this scroll um, uh, done as a book in the traditional kind of um, scroll Chinese style where this scroll um, is a 13 page letter that this woman Flut or Snow wrote to Shuk Fong. So in this 13 page letter that she wrote to Sok Fong in 1994, at the age of 55, which is the retirement age in China, she did this in one sitting. And it's kind of How do we say it? Uh, she talks about her, her horrible, wasted, lonely, misused, and abused life. And how she now finds herself alone at 55 without her murderous, incestuous um, uh, husband and um, suicide and loss of one of her daughters and um, how she managed to overcome living on the streets uh, abandoned um, because and blame her bush well, background and how she got to all of that and um, uh, uh, had a husband who ran away married her second husband who was abusive and has now how, how she through all that, she became a doctor. But now, um, so it was kind of this extraordinary read of a woman encapsulizing her life in 13 pages. It's almost like 13 episodes. And then in it, I stuck in some photos that she had of um, her and her family. So this is, um, this is this, this scroll that you will. Uh, read like a book to unroll on a table. So it's a table scroll. So in the exhibition, people sit at a nice, beautiful um, table, and they um, unroll it and, and read it, and then move it along. So it is kind of, it's kind of, you know, it is very cinematic, this read. It's, um, and in fact, someone just um, set me up. up, up a response to seeing this an exhibition and they just sent me a poem but a long poem they wrote called Dear Auntie which I just received today so so this is going to become one of the I'm doing a book around some of these works and this is going to be one of the chapters in the book this is um, one of the jars from Mother's Cupboard uh, and this particular jar is an elixir, alcohol-based for internal use. Um, my mother would add in a spoon for to soup. And it is for warming the body. And this is um, uh, is snake-based. So there's snake in there and at least a, a, a dozen other ingredients 
we were able to identify. So one of the workshops that we did at one of the Chinese medicine stores um, is I emptied the contents of this and had the herbalist, um, the expert, um, identify what each of the ingredients were. And through dumping it out, realized it had, was, was snake-based. Like this one here is um, uh, also for external, for internal use, um, and it's um, antler, deer antler based. And it also has you know, at, at least a dozen ingredients. So she was just adding to these every year. And of course, there was no recipe for them. So I have no recipe. And then, then this, I believe, is a, um, a compound um, called tet a jiao, which is um, an iron hitting ointment. And it's for external use, for cuts and bruises and jaundice. So that was a, that kind of compound. Yeah.